very good evening and uh, just a quick video this one um, for anybody who needs to change a shaft on a vintage pot um, it's actually quite a simple thing to do now this is the original one which was broken um, the switch is completely open circuit this one I managed to find at a radio boot sale and uh, it's almost identical um, the main difference is this is only a single pole single throw switch instead of a double um, and in this case the shaft is longer than I need I could just cut the shaft down on this but um, it seems a bit silly to to go through all that trouble to get one the right length so what I'm gonna do is I've already started on this one you just get your cutters and you lift up the tags and it comes apart like that now the way these are assembled you've got the shaft you've got this little C clip uh, which runs through the center of here and is pressed on at the back end here this is the resistance track right here so just round here and on this pot it only reads 300k instead of a meg which uh, you know just goes to show that there's something not quite right with it um, it turns freely you know there's, there's no denying that the thing turns and the switch itself does go click and I can flick it over with my finger but it, it's not actually making contact um, on either sets of contacts um, it, it's completely open circuit so I would say that uh, either there's an incredible amount of dirt on two sets of contacts or um, you know there's some something completely physically wrong with this now to get this part off you actually have to drill these rivets out we don't need to go that far all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this shaft so let me get the new pot and uh, just use my cutters to to lift this up just like that I'm not cutting I'm not stretching I'm just using the cutter as a fine edge just to lift it up now hopefully that should if I've done it enough just lift out like that and as you see they're identical underneath so what we need to do now is actually just um, take out the shaft uh, and, and, and swap them over now we could go the long way round and actually take the clip out pull the shaft uh, and do it that way or we could do it the easy way so this is the new one and let's make sure we don't get them confused um, although being identical manufacturers the, the manufacturer sorry is identical um, all of these bits are interchangeable so um, let me see if these will work on that if not I'll have to get my proper there we go just uh, loosen this off like this and I'm just doing it so that uh, at least one of these cameras is uh, capturing the action and then that whole assembly just pushes out like that. This is where you can check the state of the wiper contact. You don't have to mess around with the shaft. The shaft itself is lubricated and free to spin uh, and, and kept in place. So you don't need to worry about that. So this is the new one with the good track and as you see it's got a bit of oil around there let's just get the old one with the shorter shaft just unscrew that and that will come off in exactly the same way 
there's the mounting plate, there's the shaft. Check the wiper contact. You know, it's it's clean, it's making contact. And put it back on your track. Like so. And uh, that will fit into the hex that's on the back there in one position and one position only. So just make sure your plate lines up with the two dots like that and then you can put your single nut back over the shaft and tighten the whole thing down. As you see it's sitting quite proud and that's not a problem because uh, once that gets into the into the uh, moulding, you'll see it sits nice and flat and moves around really easily. And what we can do just to check it is let's bring up the multimeter, undo the wires. There we go. Put it on ohms. And the first thing we want to check before we put it all back together is the track from end to end is reading a meg. It's just over a meg, so we're within the tolerance. And the next one is that we're actually getting a resistance between the edge and the wiper. Now, we're at minimum at the moment, so we're getting about 11 ohms. As we increase that, we can see that the resistance is going up and it should when it reaches maximum maximum 1.19 1 1.119 1.115 to 1.1 meg and if again we go back to the edge just to make sure yep yeah slightly higher resistance because we've got the resistance of the contact to the very edge the wiper doesn't go all the way round to the very end of the the track so that is as simple as it is now what we've got to do is we've got to uh, put this back into the holder basically uh, into the the main now we just line it up again like we took it out let's just uh, line it up it will only fit in in one position and then we can turn we can if we haven't flicked the switch over um, let's go around to that way I believe it is and put it back in and then we should be able to activate the switch. Now to tighten it up, all you need to do is you need to get pliers or cutters or whatever you want just to push those tabs back down again. So there we go, let's just make sure we don't bend those as well with just all the rough handling. Okay, let's just make sure they're straight. Now as you see this has got flux and all sorts on it because this is how it came out of uh, the chassis that it was in. Um, let's now test the continuity between the switch just to make sure. Now at the moment we're switched off so we're showing OL and then when I throw the switch there we go no resistance whatsoever or point 0.1 um, I just click it off 
and just click it back on again for the hell of it. Click it off. There we go. Now we've got a working a working on off switch. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully we shall see you again in the not too distant future. Uh, like and subscribe, hit the bell button and uh, just generally stick around. I'm hoping you're enjoying what I'm doing. Um, if you'd like to leave any comments, uh, be very grateful. They are all read. Bye for now.